In this lesson, we're going to take a look at doing SQL injection using Burp Suite. Now, the advantage to using Burp Suite is, first of all, I've got all of the site inside of Burp Suite, so I can easily do manipulations on the pages and throw them to different pieces of Burp Suite, and then just do changes on the parameters. And it makes it pretty convenient to have this one suite that's capable of doing all of these things. The first thing I want to do is I need to find a page that is potentially vulnerable to SQL injection. And we've actually got a couple here. If I go into DVWA and then I go to SQL I, it looks like if I just do that page there, I may be vulnerable to SQL injection on that page. Let's go into DVWA. And I'm going to go into vulnerabilities here. And then I'm going to open up SQL I. And this is the page here. And I'm actually going to open that up and then just take this and send it over to the intruder. In this case, I've actually got my attack target again. And we pulled that in from the URL. And I'm going to go to positions. I'm actually going to clear everything out again. We're going to use the sniper in this case. And the reason for that is I've only got one parameter that I'm going to be doing any changing to. And that's a sniper attack. I'm going to add a payload position there. And now I'm going to go to my payloads. And I'm going to leave it as a simple list in this case. And the reason for that is because I've got SQL injection here as a list that's in Burp Suite. And I don't have to do much of anything, although I certainly could go through here and see whether there's any other possibilities that I may want to load up. In this case, though, I'm just going to leave it alone. And I'm going to go up to Intruder, and I'm going to start the attack just as we did with the brute forcing of the password, we're going to see whether we get any data here. Because I'm getting a status of 200 on all of them, the way I'm going to tell that is, if I look at the length, these are all 4664. And theoretically, anyway, if I get one that's going to give me some data, then it ought to be different from 4664. Let's see whether we get anything that's different. And it looks like they're all 4664, so it doesn't actually look as though anything succeeded. Although we could certainly take a look here if I were to open this up. And I wanted to select one of these. Let's pick a good one here. I've got the request here. I've got one or one equals one. And now let's take a look at the response. And I can actually look at this in just the HTML, or I could actually render it. And rendering it actually gives me the page without having to read through the HTML. And in this case, it doesn't look like it gave me much of anything. And I could do the same thing with any one of these. I could just do a render on it and just see what we actually got. In this case, it doesn't look like that particular page may be vulnerable, or at least the possibilities that we ran through here didn't succeed. This is a way of quickly running through a long list of SQL injection attack possibilities and seeing whether the page actually responds to it. Now, again, this may not actually give you much of anything. It may be that just the one string that will yield results isn't actually in here. It may take a little bit more work. But you can actually do other modifications to this as well. And we could actually do the payload type and change it to case modification. And then let's do the fuzzing of SQL injection here. And we can do some case modifications. We're going to do a lot of changing of case because what happens is 
Sometimes when you're doing checking for whether input is valid or not, you may not think to do something like do an uppercase on everything and then compare to an uppercase. You may be looking for a specific case pattern, and if we vary the case pattern in the attack that we're sending, it may actually work where a standard case wouldn't work. In this case, we're going to run through this, and we're going to go through a lot of variables here. By this point before, we were pretty well done, and now we're just doing the changes to the first letter, and then we're uppercasing everything. We've added a number of other ones, and it doesn't look like that actually made much of a difference either. But that's another way of doing some testing to see whether we can get through some basic input validation. That's how you would do SQL injection in Burp Suite, and we'll take a look at how you would do cross-site scripting coming up.